everyone sort of saw the calf sitting on the uh, on the media credenza that we have in our den, and they were like, "Oh, those are cool." And then they were kind of like, "Where's all the cables? Like, where's the rest of the system?" And I held up my iPhone and I said, "This is the rest of the system." <laughs> viewers it's the kef lsx2 and um this is actually the second generation of this product from kef um kef has actually doubled down in 2022 on their wireless products there's now the flagship ls60 there's the ls52 and then the baby of the line is this um 1400 plus lsx2 and, you know, actually the, the KEF actually is based in New Jersey in the U.S. So it was rather easy for them to send me a pair of speakers from only like 20 minutes away. And they actually, I was surprised by the finish they sent me. They sent me the Terrence Conran Soundwave, which is the version that's on the screen right now. It's sort of a brownish gold. I mean, I, I wouldn't call them bronze. And, you know, um, these speakers have um, fabric sort of, uh, I guess, wraparound surrounds. Um, like the 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 actual cabinets, if you, if you kind of switch the image, um, it's probably hard to see. It looks like it's actually yeah. like a you know the same material as the front baffle, but it's in fact you know a fabric. And so on the LSX2 with the Terrence Conran design, um, there's actually a very unique sort of pattern that was uh, designed in the UK. And you know it's uh, I, I don't I didn't particularly love the color. So if I was to buy these, I would definitely go for the white or the blue. Um, mm. I just I think for, for everyone, it's going to be a personal preference because um, in, my, in my house, most of the walls are blue. Like right. I, I, I have a, either a blue or yellow wall in every room in my house. So the, the blue or the white would kind of be the best choice in my house. Um, you know, the, I guess the sixty-four thousand dollar question would be, and I left this somewhat ambiguous at the end of the review. You know, who are these for? I think that's the mm. big thing because. These are very expensive for wireless speakers. I mean, $1,400 $1, plus, along with three different types of stand options, suddenly makes this a $1,700 or more loudspeaker. Um, Kef offers a, um, actually, if, you, if you're going through the slides, you know, there's the base that you're showing here. I mean, mm -hmm. this is almost a $400, I believe, addition, you know, to the speakers. And you know it's a solid metal stand, you know, and it has cable management sort of on the on the inside. But you know it, that, that's a pretty ex expensive accessory to add to a fourteen hundred dollar wireless pair of loudspeakers. They also have a, I guess, what's called a desk pad, and it's and it's a an, an iron sort of stand that goes on your desktop. The one, yeah, right, this one here. So it, it's it's a it's a metal stand. The speakers sort of you know attached to it. Um, it angles the driver you know up at your head. Um, you know, they're, they're high quality, but this is also, once again, I think it's either 279 or even $300 for these little stands. And then Kef also has a wall mount um, that you can actually buy to go along with the LSX2. And that's also a couple hundred dollars. So, I mean, so if you decide to, you know, not go with any stands, which you can, I mean, I, I mean, I did, and I have other stands I could have used with it. Um, you know, you're going to have to spend an extra couple hundred dollars, you know, with the speakers. Um, and now the speakers themselves are about eight pounds a piece. Mm. Uh, and obviously, I mean, the speakers obviously have, you know, besides the speaker drivers and the cabinet and the enclosure, you know, there's a digital amplifier inside. Um, and obviously there's a DAC and, you know, the, the streaming capabilities that are built into the speaker. And I think, you know, that's what makes the LSX2 such a good product um, is that, you know, the initial generation of this speaker and the LS50 wireless got knocked pretty hard by the community for, I guess, you know, I guess the, 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 Kef, the Kef Connect app was actually kind of a work in motion. Um, it wasn't really that effective in terms of, you know, how easy it was to work. I know a lot of people sort of sold those speakers, the original version, because they hated the app that much. And, you know, the, the app really, you know, needed to be refreshed by Kef you know, in order to make it make make the product easier to use. And, I, and I've used the, the older versions, so I, I have some context in, in terms of the review. Um, the new Connect Act, uh, the new Connect app from Kef is a much better, I, I guess, iteration um, of the app. It's easier to use. Um, the streaming platforms are better integrated into it. 
Um, and also, if, if you go to the review, you'll see that there are a number of sub uh, menus um, that I took photographs of during my review that show you how to actually sort of use the EQ settings, how to actually set the speakers for the room. Now, Kev has a feature in the app that if you're gonna use the speakers and people will see here that they're on stands, but if you're gonna use them like I did on a media credenza or even a bookshelf, because because Kev actually does suggest that you know you can use these effectively as a bookshelf speaker and, or a desktop speaker. Um, there's actually a desk setting and there's actually a sort of a freestanding setting that, that modifies, I think, the bass response um, with the speakers. And you can actually manually sort of change the bass response of the speakers. And, you know, I pretty much left them in the sort of desk, desk sort of setting because really I was using it on a media credenza and they were placed not more than seven or eight inches from the wall behind them. And when I used them on my actual desk, like my working desk here in my basement office, I mean, they weren't more than two or three feet from my head. You know, so I sort of, I actually placed them on a set of ISO acoustic stands, you know, that I use for other speakers just so that I could actually lift them off the table. Um, and so, I mean, it, it's not an inexpensive proposition. I mean, I, I think some people, when they buy this speaker, are probably going to buy one of the three stand options. Mm -hmm. So suddenly this becomes $1,600, $1,700 or more as a product. And, you know, the question is, you know, are they worth it? And I would actually say, um, Based on, I would say there's three things about them that I really, really liked. The connectivity is fantastic. Um, you know, they work natively. It's they work with um, Spotify Connect and Title Connect. And you know, and I noted, I sort of noted in the review, I'm not really a Spotify user. I really only use Cobuzz um, and Tidal. So I had to use Cobuzz within the Kef app. But then I was able to sort of like log into my kids' Spotify app and use Spotify Connect on my iPhone, but also use my Tidal account on my iPhone to stream directly from that app to the speaker. It was seamless. I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean the, the, there was no lag between the time that I picked a song and pressed play. Um, one thing that I do think they need to work on actually um, is the volume slider. It, it's a little coarse. Like I, I, I think you know that there needs to be a little bit more refinement in terms of like you know how many steps there are within the volume control itself. I, I just think, you know, like the range, it can go from like, you know, really quiet to like turn it down in a span of like a second. And I think it would be better if they had a little, I guess, a wider range of volume settings. Um, but the app itself works great. You know, I, I loaded it from the, you know, from the app store in only like 30, 40 seconds. I, you know, I created my account. I already had a Kef account from, from other Kef stuff. So, so it was like, it was easy. It was very easy to kind of get set up. Um, now the rear panel actually of the speaker, um, is rather busy. Now, um, we're not allowed to use the master and slave terminology anymore in the, I, I, which I get, but, but I've noticed that in every speaker review that involves now wireless speakers, because no, it used to be, we called them the master speaker and the slave speaker because one speaker essentially is slave to the other. But now we call them the primary and the secondary. So in the case of the LSX2, the speaker, you know, really, so you'll notice that there's two ethernet networking ports on the back panel. So one of those goes to your home network and the other one goes to the other speaker. And, you know, Kef actually provide a very, very high end uh, cat. I think in the case of mine, I think it was a cat six cable, but it might even be a cat five a, but it's a very, very high end um, ethernet cable with a really good sort of termination, like much mm -hmm. better quality than you see on generic um, ethernet cables. And I'm sure there are audiophiles who will say, well, did you try any audiophile ethernet cables? And the answer is no, because audiophile ethernet cables are stupid. And, and, and also, you know, 99% of the people who are going to buy this speaker are buying it because it's like a 10 minute setup. And the last thing they're thinking about is, oh, do I have to get some special cable to attach the two speakers? You know, so I applaud CAF for including a really high quality, um, ethernet cable. It's, you know, a decent length. So, so, I mean, you can separate these speakers by a good eight to 10 feet um, with no problem whatsoever. Um, and also on the back panel of the, the primary speaker, um, I'm going to point it out. So there is an HDMI um, arc connection, which I did use connected to a TV. It worked flawlessly. I, I didn't even have one issue. I just went into the TV to make sure that, you know, that it was engaged. Um, there's an optical um, digital input. There's also a USB-C on the back. 
And there's also uh, a 3.5 auxiliary, which I used to connect the Cambridge Audio um, Alva TT version two turntable to the back of the primary speaker, which is a really great feature in this. I think if they had not included a set of analog inputs, that mm. I, I would have taken a star off because I don't mm. see how, I you know, because even though it's a wireless speaker, there's so many people who have purchased turntables in the last couple of years that that would have been a huge mistake by Kef to not have at least one set of RCA analog inputs. And then also um, the last the last output is actually a sub out, a dedicated sub out, you know, and really that's designed for one of Kef subs. And, you know, and as I noted in the review, you know, these will play cleanly down, honestly, I think into about the 50 Hertz range. Mm. I mean, and, and I, I played a lot of heavy metal <laughs> and sort of uh, electronic music through these just to see, you know, how deep the bass would go, you know, how how resolute the bass is. And, you know, it's not bad. I mean, the for, they're a little speaker. It's a four and a half inch, you know, essentially coaxial driver. I mean, the law of physics, you know, will only allow you to do so much with a right. speaker that weighs seven and a half pounds and it can fit in your, and fit in your hand. Um, but these play down fairly low. But, you know, Kef will even admit, you know, that if you add one of their subwoofers, you know, to this sort of system, you know, it's going to change its performance in a rather dramatic way. And and I think for, for myself personally, if I was to buy, yeah, is that right, the, the sub you're showing, <clears throat> if I was to buy this speaker, I would use it in a 2.1 sort of living room den television music type of system because these these speakers are really good with movies and television i mean i watched um and or on disney plus i watched um actually house of the dragon game of thrones um through hulu on them and you know these speakers really do actually have a decent amount of dynamic range but i think adding a subwoofer to them would really change their performance and now, granted, you know, the KEF, K, I think it's, is it the KC62? Uh, KC62, yep. Right. I mean, I think that actually costs more than these speakers. So you're already right. talking about a $3,000 investment. But I have to tell you something. It's like, it's a really, really, really compact, well done system. And, you know, and if your only two sources are streaming in a turntable, I mean, this is like ideal because, because, right. because like, because what do you need? You need the two speakers. You might need the stands. You might need the subwoofer, and you know you plug your turntable into the back of the speakers. You can control the volume of the turntable through the app, and you're done. Right. And you have literally the one cable, that, the Ethernet cable that runs from the primary to the secondary, and you have the two power cords that you obviously you have to plug into either a line conditioner or directly into the wall. And so it's a very very neat kind of system, you know, with, you know, very little clutter. I mean, a number of, I had a number, I happen to have a number of house guests in the last, uh, I guess, two weeks or so for the first time in a while. And everyone sort of saw the calf sitting on the, uh, on the media credenza that we have in our den. And they were like, oh, those are cool. And then they were kind of like, where's all the cables? Like, where's the rest of the system? And I held up my iPhone and I said, this is the rest of the system. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. So, I mean, I think obviously there's a type of consumer who's looking for a cable clutter free type of wireless speaker that's really high performance. And I think the Kef LSX2 kind of fits that bill. Um, I would definitely say that, you know, there are cheaper ways of doing this because mm. there are, because there are obviously, you know, less expensive Bluetooth speakers. If you want to go down that path that you could buy from, you know, PSB, from audio engine, from Fluence, um, I'm sure there's one or two others that I'm forgetting in the same price range. And you could add, if you wanted, really, if you wanted, you know, the best quality streaming, you could add something like a Blue Sound No to it, you know, if, if you were so inclined. And that would still be cheaper than this. Mm. Um, or some people would just say, you know, why do you even need to do that? Just stream using Bluetooth from your phone. I think the, the big difference, though, is that, you know, if you're, if in this particular case, I mean, I plugged my rune nucleus into the network and these are rune ready speakers so mm. i could i could access my rune account um from the phone and you know the the dac inside the lsx is better than what you're going to get from a lot of these inexpensive bluetooth speakers so from from a sound quality point of view i mean i mean i would say the only ones that really come close to mind are the um q acoustics m20 hds 
but mm -hmm. you know, but, but 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 still, I mean, we're talking about an, at least an eight hundred dollar difference in price. Mm. And, and I really like the Q acoustics. I use them every day. They're my de you can't see them on camera, but they're my desktop speakers that I've right. used for actually more than a year. You know, so obviously I like them enough. Um, you know, but 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 I just think you know also Q acoustics doesn't have the kind of sophisticated app, you know, that Kef has. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the the integration of Spotify Connect and Title Connect, you know, really get is really it's very advantageous. I think for a lot of people, you know, they might be willing to spend the extra money when they realize. Oh, I already use Spotify. I already use Title. I can right. just literally click like uh, the review. Actually, I think I even have a couple of screenshots that show that I'm using, you know, like Title Connect on the phone. And there's a right. little image of a speaker in the corner that says, you know, Kef LSX two, you know, right. in the app. So I mean, it's really easy to do it. And and I think for a lot of people, you know, simplicity kind of rules. Right. And, you know it. It sounds like to me, if you're if you're a title customer and you and you want to use Title Connect, that's going to give you the best sound quality with yeah, the speakers because absolutely. They're, because they're actually bypassing Bluetooth, so you lose that degradation problem that Bluetooth offers. Right, it's right, right into the speaker. Speaker, and right. you get a higher quality signal. Yeah. So they're kind of almost made for title, if I think about it. Yeah, well, Not yeah. I, I mean, also, I mean, Kobas sounds really good. Hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I was using okay. Kobas within. The Kef app, and I mean, I don't really think that Kobas and Title sound. I mean, let's be honest, we've had this discussion a million times. I don't think they really sound that much different from one another. Um, right. uh, but 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 I just think though that from a simplicity point of view, you know, I mean, my nine-year-old daughter figured out how to use these speakers. Right. So I mean, I mean, the fact that my nine-year-old was able to go on an iPad, and you know, and download the Kef app, and you know, use her Spotify account on the iPad right. and she was and also and she streamed the audio from TikTok and YouTube through the speakers and she thought that right. was the cool she thought that was the coolest thing ever so right. if a 9 year old can accomplish it then i think you know the average person can too right right so would these be considered a major upgrade over anyone considering Sonos this offers a lot of the same features as Sonos or how would you compare the two well sonically yes I mean, I, I mean, I don't think any of the Sonos speakers compared to this sonically, um, but, but, but it's just, I mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, look, the Sonos S2 app is very good. You know, there, there's no question that the Sonos S2 app is very good. It's very slick. It's very polished. They invested like God knows how much money in that app. Um, but from a sound quality point of view, I've yet to review or hear any Sonos wireless speakers that touch this one. So... I mean, but granted, you know, I mean, you're, you're talking a fourteen hundred dollar pair right. of wireless speakers, so right. So sound sound quality should be really good for fourteen hundred dollars, <laughs> right? But there's also a bigger brother to this model, the Kef LS50 Wireless Two. Two, yeah, that's like a thousand dollars more, and that's a very different animal okay. because also, um, just sort of quickly, because I know we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah, the the the, the LSX Two uses the le the eleventh generation. Kev hmm. driver the okay. ls52 and the ls60 use the latest generation driver and also the, the, that's also the driver um technology that uses mat hmm. um and that's actually um in actually one of our articles about sort of the ls60 and the LF, ls52 uh Kev's mat technology um really has a huge influence and sort of impact on especially like the bass response of the speakers because the, the way that the port is designed and the way the inside of the cabinet is designed, it's right. not the same as the LSX. So, mm. so if anyone thinks that Kev's just giving you a bigger speaker with you know a bigger driver, it's not. It's a it's a very different sort of technology, and it's a very different cabinet kind of construction. And uh, I mean, I've heard the LS52 a couple of times, and it, it different level of dynamic range mm. and impact and bass response gotcha. in these. Yeah, gotcha. But sounds like these are. Um, all in one solution, streaming, very few cables. There's one cable between the two speakers. You plug them into the wall and you're and done. And you have.